in my five years of professional social media experience, content that I've posted on our pages have been seen over one billion times at almost no cost. We are only seeing the tip of the iceberg in terms of the impact that we're making on social media. We are having such a massive impact. So it's really important for us to look at everything we do and everything we say on social media as an opportunity to help animals or to hurt animals. Because after all, it's about winning hearts and minds, not arguments and debates. I just want you to imagine yourself for a moment as an egg-laying hen trapped in a factory farm, trapped in a battery cage, so small you can't even spread your wings. The only space you have is about the size of a sheet of paper, kind of like this. You spread your wings and you feel nothing but cage beside you. You feel other birds. There are five, six, seven other birds sharing the same cage as you. You are li living in nothing but filth, sadness, cruelty, neglect. The ammonia burns. You can hardly breathe. You're living in misery. And this is how you live your whole life. Your whole roughly 18-month life is spent in these conditions. Until one day, somebody comes in, opens your cage, pulls you out, throws you onto a truck, transports you, in any kind of weather extreme to an unmarked building, somebody else yanks you out, shackles you upside down, you go on a conveyor belt, you're confused, probably in pain, and then your neck goes against a spinning razor blade. You're killed, and you're then shortly dismembered and eventually eaten, and this was your life. Your value was nothing more than the meat on your bones, and the eggs you pushed out. And for decades, centuries, millennia, you essentially had no one to speak up for you. No one until now. Now they have you. You are part of a movement, a movement to give these animals a voice like they've never had before. Social media gives us an opportunity to, to speak up for these animals in a whole new way. And I'm here to tell you that animal liberation is achievable. It's achievable if we put our heads together and advocate for animals on social media in the ways that are most effective. Each week, tens of millions of people are, reaching, are being reached with the plight of today's farm animals because of people like you. So please give yourselves a round of applause for all the work you do. Now I want to caveat this presentation with the fact that it's important to note that although social media is uh, extremely effective, it's important to still have boots on the ground. Boots on the ground to show that this is a cause worth fighting for. The animals are a cause worth getting in the streets for, but when your, when your boots aren't on the ground and when you're not in the streets fighting for animals, you can still advocate for animals on social media. It's a great supplement to the activism you're already involved with. So I'm here to talk about just a few ways to help and how to really optimize your time on social media to really make a difference for animals. Because every time you're choosing to do something for animals, you're choosing, or choosing to do something on social media for animals, you're choosing not to do something else. Every time you say something on social media for animals, you're choosing not to say something else. So in essence, we have this constant opportunity cost. So we really want to take advantage to do the most amount of good that we can. Now there are a variety of ways that you can help animals on social media. One of the ways is to uh, follow already established pages and groups like the Humane League and share our posts. You can join online advocacy groups like the Humane League's Fast Action Network and take simple actions online to help animals every single day, every single week. You can also talk about the activism that you're involved in, whether that's leafletting, paid per views, uh, virtual outreach, uh, food giveaways, pig vigil, or animal vigils, anything like that. Uh, this is a photo of my mom leafletting uh, a few years ago, shortly after she was diagnosed with cancer. She still got out there, spoke up for the animals. Uh, she was a real badass. Talk about your origin story. Uh, talk about how you got involved with animal issues, how you became inspired to take animal issues more seriously, get involved with advocating for animal rights, getting, you know, how you became vegan. Uh, this is part of my origin story. Uh, when I was 12 years old in 1999, my mom and I, uh, we were pretty poor, so 
in the state of Michigan in the United States, uh, if you uh, return a, an aluminum can to a grocery store, you get 10 cents. Uh, so it's like the only state in the United States that has it for 10 cents. So in the mornings, we would go to a park. We would collect these aluminum cans out of trash cans, and we would then take them to the grocery store, and that would help pay our bills. Uh, we would do this usually in the early mornings, and uh, it was a great bonding experience for us, but uh, one of the cool things was that deer were often um, in the park, and we would see them like almost every day, and it was cool. They were like our friends. As a 12-year-old kid, like, I thought that was pretty cool, and I really appreciated the deer. Uh, then one day, this park announced that they were going to start a hunt, and these animals had never been hunted before. And uh, my mom and I were heartbroken about it. So instead of resting on our laurels, we decided to get out and speak up for the animals. So in all weather conditions, um, uh, many, many days, we would go out there and protest. And we even got some local, uh, some local news coverage, which is what you see here. And that was a really um, defining moment in my life and my first really, real foray into activism. And I will always be grateful for my mom for taking me out there um, as a 12-year-old to speak up for the animals in this whole way. So speaking about your origin story on social media is a really great way for people con to connect with you, but also to connect with animals. Additionally, you can also talk about vegan food. You know, a lot of people have this misconception that we eat nothing but granola and grass. Uh, I mean, who eats grass? Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously everybody here knows about the amazing vegan food that's available. You know, we had some really great vegan food for breakfast, very European style. I really appreciated that. Uh, here I'm eating a double Beyond Meat burger. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Beyond Meat, by the way. Uh, there are like two or three slides of Beyond Meat in it. I swear I'm not sponsored. I'm just a big fan. Uh, but uh, talk about the amazing vegan food that's out there. Uh, use memes. Uh, memes are the language of the internet, and we should be always be speaking the language of the internet. So uh, memes are a really great way to, to communicate. And applaud companies, uh, you know, not just companies, organizations, politicians, individuals who are making strides that's making, that, that are making differences for animals or committing to policies that are going to make a big difference for animals or introducing new vegan products. You know, use social media as a way to applaud these companies and individuals for doing and saying good things. Also use, um, have them stay accountable. Uh, by the way, I found this awesome stock image on the internet. Uh, a person might be here today, I don't know. Uh, but I thought it was a pretty cool photo just find on Getty Images. Uh, I think it's a sign of the times. Uh, but, you know, use social media as a way to uh, speak up for the animals uh, and, and hold companies accountable and hold uh, individuals accountable uh, and really speak up for the animals in, in this unique way. You know, nobody wants to be trolled. So, you know, if companies are, are doing bad things to animals, let these companies know that this is not something you're okay with. And if you're experienced, uh, volunteer with uh, you know, your local animal protection organization. Fortunately, we are here with many great animal rights organizations represented. Um, and there are you know, thousands, tens of thousands of animal advocacy groups around the world that you could volunteer with. And social media is an area where there is essentially endless opportunity to speak up for the animals. So definitely take advantage of that. Now I want to talk a little bit about effective communication on social media. So I think it's very important to mention that uh, communication, uh, you know, the operative word here is effective, okay? Effective communication is not about what makes you feel good. Effective communication is not about what makes you win debates. Effective communication is about what is going to win the hearts and minds of those eating animals. Uh, we want to be strategic with everything we do and everything we say. Every time we're speaking about animal issues on social media, we essentially have the opportunity to help animals or to hurt them, so we want to be strategic and do everything that we can to help them. One of the first things we can do, don't get caught in the vegan bubble. If your whole news feed is nothing but left-wing radicals, that's cool and all, but that's not reality. Uh, you know, 
if all you're seeing is left-wing radicals, then there's a problem because that is not the world. If the world was just left-wing radicals, then we wouldn't need left-wing radicals. Uh, so we really want to have a variety of uh, things that we're seeing. We want to see content from people who we don't agree with. If we are just seeing content that we, from people that we agree with, we are losing our touch to our ability to stay in touch with the mainstream. And it's important that we know how the mainstream public and the general public thinks and talks and feels and what they care about, because by knowing that, we are going to know how to cater our message to be more effective and know your audience. Understand who you're speaking to. You know, if I'm speaking to a bunch of hipsters in their teens or 20s, I know what's going to, you know, I, I don't have a problem saying go vegan. But if I'm speaking to a group of hunters or a group of middle-aged blue-collar workers or older people, uh, I might have to take a message that is more tame but might be more effective. Yes, it'll feel good telling anybody to go vegan, but is it really going to be the most effective thing you can do? You really want to know your audience and know what message is going to work for them. Don't be a jerk. Don't finger point. Don't be accusatory. When is the last time you saw somebody being a jerk or being a bully and said, hey, I want to be like that person? Uh, exactly. You never really see that. So what you want to do is uh, treat others with respect, especially those who disagree with you, and everybody will take you mes your message more seriously. And keep in mind that on social media, a lot of your uh, communication, or a lot of uh, your influence is not going to come either with, even with the person you're directly communicating with. A lot of it is going to come from what other people are seeing you saying. So a lot of other people are seeing your conversation and how you deal with that person is really going to um, impact everybody else beyond just your interaction with that one individual. Don't be doom and gloom all the time. It can be very easy to get caught up in the sense of doom and gloom because yes, it's horrible what's happening on factory farms and slaughterhouses in the world. Uh, you know, we're, in, we're currently in a state where more animals, have ever been, more animals are being killed every second than have ever been killed in the history of, of, uh, of mankind. And that sucks. But if we are uh, pessimistic and downers all the time, we are not going to influence as many people than if we, are, uh, we come to people in a positive way. And I'm not saying be false positive, you know, and have all this you know, BS people, but at least have a smile on your face and show that it is not doom and gloom all the time. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to feel joy. If we're just you know, you know, sad and down all the time and don't ever express joy, nobody is going to want to go vegan. So, uh, so think about that. Uh, this next one is I want to point out that it's important to show you have outside interests outside interests to show that you are a three-dimensional person with things that you are, or that, so you are interested in other things beyond animal advocacy. If you, sh if you come off as like dogmatic and just obsessed with just animal rights, which most of us here are, um, that's, that's good. But coming off, that, coming off like that to the general public can be a little off-putting and make people not feel related to you. So show that you have outside interests. Some examples of that is, hey, sometimes you just want to feed a pig with Beyond Meat uh, at the Beyond Meat headquarters, uh, or that uh, you want, you know, that you like vegan mac and cheese pizza. Um, actually, unpopular opinion here. I think vegan mac and cheese, great by itself. Pizza, fantastic by itself. When you put them together, not so good. Uh, and show that sometimes you need a little bit of help from your friends to get along. Uh, now I want to talk a little bit about effective engagement. So this is basically getting people to like your stuff and share your stuff. Don't put all of your follow your heart eggs into one basket. Uh, what I mean by that is to diversify your time across different platforms. If you spend all of your time advocating or you know, building up your reputation and your following on one platform, and then that platform goes under in two years, you just spent all that time building up that capital for nothing. So it's important to diversify your time across different platforms. I mean, when's the last time anybody heard from MySpace Tom? Post content that is going to get shared. So I can't, under, I can't overestimate the importance of posting content 
that is going to get shared. Shares are how you're going to build your following. Shares are how your content is going to get views. And shares are how your message is going to be amplified. Uh, so on that point, when you're phrasing your caption, phrase your caption in a way that is going to get the most amount of shares. Put yourself in your audience's shoes. If I saw this post, would I want to share it? Think about it like that. You want to post a blend of content. So you know, variety is the spice of life. So don't just post the same stuff all the time. Even if you're doing great work, don't just post about that great work all the time. Don't, if, you, if you leaflet, don't just post about leafletting all the time. If you go to save vigils, don't just post about save vigils all the time. Mix it up so you keep your audience guessing and aren't burning them out or boring them. So examples of this, maybe talk about factory farming one day. Next time, talk about the amazing vegan food you just had. Next time, post a meme. I t I'm telling you, memes are the language of the internet, and humor is a great way to connect with people. So I think that uh, posting uh, humor-based things is, is a good thing to incorporate into your mix of content that you're pushing out there. And when in doubt, post about avocados. Uh, you know, avocados, uh, you know, vegans tend to fetishize avocados. Uh, not sure why, but actually I do, I do know why, because they're pretty damn good. Um, and other things that you can think about is considering Google Drive. Uh, Google Drive is a fantastic way for you to organize your content for social media. That way you can be a little bit more strategic and actually plan, as opposed to just randomly posting. The other cool thing about Google Drive and platforms like this is that they're collaborative. So you get m multiple people having access to the same content. So if you're doing like save vigils all the time, uh, you know, upload all of your content to a central Google Drive and have everybody else do the same thing. Excuse me. And then pretty soon you have hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of images and videos that you can you can share. Include specific calls to action. So when you are posting something, have something in mind that people can do. So whether that's retweet something, or share something, or go vegan for a month, have a call to action. And when you do have calls to action, have them do that on the platform that they're on. So if you are on Twitter, don't tell somebody to go to your Instagram. If you're posting to Facebook, don't tell somebody to go to your Twitter or your Instagram. Have people take action on the platform that they're on, and more likely people are actually going to uh, take that action. Appeal to anger over sadness. Anger is a high arousal emotion, and research shows that appealing to anger is actually what's most likely to cause your content to go viral. So make your audience, audience upset. I mean, don't make your audience upset just for the sake of it. That would make you a terrible person. Uh, but make your audience upset so that they take action for animals that you want them to take action for. So uh, never underestimate the importance of appealing to anger. And uh, focus on standard practice. Yes, occasionally showing incidents of isolated animal cruelty is, is acceptable. For example, somebody slamming a piglet on the ground or something, uh, shining a spotlight on that kind of thing once in a while is fine. But in general, I think it's more important and more effective to shine a spotlight on standard practices and the reason being, because it is so bad, we don't need to exaggerate. Factory farming is essentially the worst possible form of long-term torture that we can inflict on others. Uh, being mutilated without painkillers, being confined for days, weeks, months, years at a time, uh, and then being slaughtered and eaten. That is all messed up, and that is standard practice and legal. And that's the kind of thing that we should be shining a spotlight on, more so than just isolated incidents of animal cruelty. And this way, if somebody says, oh, well, you know, I'm sure the, pig, you know, the bacon I'm eating is not from some piglet that was slammed on the ground. But they can't say that if, you, if you're showing them you know, footage of an, uh, a mother pig confined to a gestation crate or a piglet having its testicles cut out without, uh, without uh, painkiller. Don't be afraid to use humor and creativity to get your message across. Uh, this is a fun spin on uh, a certain advertise, advertising campaign out there. Uh, it says, eat more plants. Uh, I think that creativity and humor is a nice way to get people to let their guard down a little bit. So I think that's a really effective way to, uh, to speak up for the animals. Now I want to talk a little bit about effective engagement. So 
you don't, so don't automatically cross post on across different platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they make it very easy for you to automatically post the same post across different platforms. Stop doing this, it doesn't look good. Uh, post independently to each platform. And that's because you know, photos and videos should be cropped differently, captions should be written differently. Uh, it just doesn't look great if we are posting the same thing. And you're not gonna get the same kind of level of engagement on each post. Even if you're posting the same thing, you should post it independently to each platform. Also, post natively whenever possible as opposed to sharing from other publishers. An example, if your favorite animal rights organization posts a news article about some new vegan options or a new vegan restaurant opening up in your town, don't share from that page as opposed, or what you should do instead is go to that article, copy the URL, URL, post it to your own page, and then you know, write your own caption about it. And this way, if people feel compelled to share your, your post, you are actually benefiting from that. People are seeing your page, and then they are liking and following you as a result. Uh, so whenever possible, post natively. But for those times that you don't wanna post natively, you wanna actually share from another publisher, make sure you include your own caption. So don't just hit the share button and say, you know, so-and-so shared this. Actually, share it and include your own caption because your friends care about what you think. They care about what you have to say about something. So share your own opinion, even if it's very brief. Keep captions short and sweet. Be concise. I have a 75-25 rule. 75% 75 of my captions are short, one to three sentences. 25 percent of my captions are longer, maybe two to four paragraphs. And this is because people have a very short attention span on social media. If you don't believe me, just watch a friend of yours scroll on Instagram. It is unbelievable. It's like scroll, 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 scroll. It's, 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 it's really wild. So uh, because of that, we need, to have, we need to have captions that appeal to this sense of very short attention spans. And less is more. So post less often. No matter how many times you're posting on Facebook, post less than that. Uh, the vast, what I mean by that is because the vast majority of people post over post on Facebook uh, and social media in general, but especially Facebook. Uh, people are more likely to hear you out if you actually post less often. Uh, you don't want to overwhelm your audience. You don't want to burn them out. I think people are more likely to hear you out if you post on a shorter basis. So I would recommend one to three times per week on Facebook, maybe a little bit more on Instagram, maybe uh, five to 10 times on Instagram per week. And on Twitter, you can do pretty much whatever you want because the Twitter feed is so fluid and rapid. Uh, but those are especially true for Facebook and Instagram. You'll actually get more likes and comments per post if you post a little bit less frequently. And for what kind of content to post, photos and videos are best, especially one photo or one video. And video is becoming more and more prioritized on social media. Uh, you know, I remember two or three years ago, I would scroll through Facebook and I would see a video maybe every five minutes. Now it's basically every other post is a video. So you really wanna prioritize video whenever you, have the whenever you have the opportunity. Some other things for your consideration for effective engagement, Facebook will never die. So block out what the haters say. Uh, you know, Facebook is not going to pull a MySpace and just disappear one day. Uh, Facebook is here for the long term, and you know, I think it's just too ingrained in nearly every aspect of our life to ever go away. But I think this is actually a good thing, because Facebook has the be, the share function on Facebook has the opportunity to do massive amounts of good for animals. I think that in 20, 40, 100 years when animal liberation has been achieved and we can all focus on, focus on other things, we are going to look back as one of, the, one of the main reasons that this happened was because of the share button on Facebook. I know that sounds strange, but the share button on Facebook provides an opportunity to reach massive quantities of individuals. In my five years of professional social media experience with the Humane League and prior to that vegan outreach, uh, content that I've posted on our pages have been seen over one billion times. 
at almost no cost. So social media, and especially the share button on Facebook, provides an incredible opportunity to speak up for the animals. So I actually am happy that Facebook is around for the long haul. Experiment with Facebook Live. Uh, Facebook Live is a cool feature that Facebook provides, and Facebook wants you to do it. So because Facebook wants you to do it, they're going to prioritize that in news feeds. So, uh, and on that note, when social media platforms introduced new features, take advantage of those new features. They, that is good for two reasons. For one, uh, you will be an early adopter, so you will be good at them. You will be good at using them when everybody else is just getting started. Two years ago when Instagram Stories launched, I wish I would have gotten on that board, but I was like, no, I got Snapchat. I don't need to use Instagram Stories. And now people use Instagram Stories more than they use the normal um, wall feed. So uh, if I had gotten on a board with it two years ago, I would be better at it. Now I'm, I say I maybe have mediocre Instagram Stories. <laughs> Hopefully that'll change soon. But, uh, so I think that's good to be an early adopter. And also, uh, you're going to be prioritized in news feeds because social media platforms want you to use these new features. And on Facebook, reply to comments. Facebook really prioritizes conversations. So uh, post content that is going to create conversations, but also have conversations in the comments section of your Facebook posts. That is going to tell Facebook that, hey, people are talking about this. That means it's worth showing in news feeds. So more people are going to see it, more people are going to engage with it, and more people are going to follow you. It's a cyclical thing. And then the last thing I'll say about Facebook, this is a little bit of a hack, is if you post something to Facebook, a day later, maybe even like two or three days later, each day, comment on your own post. Every time you do that, it'll show back up in news feeds which is pretty cool, because then you get more engagement and more people seeing your posts. Snapchat is dead, and Instagram killed it. Uh, but hey, it's OK. It's one less social media platform for you to endlessly cycle through every 15 minutes. Uh, now, it's important to prioritize temporary content. And what I mean by that is that 24-hour like, content that um, you know, used to be only on Snapchat, now it's on Instagram stories. Prioritize Instagram stories. Um, Snapchat is OK. It's, a, it's an OK messaging tool. But it is not the greatest tool for, uh, for influencing the general public. Uh, Snapchat is uh, good for communicating with a small group of like, close friends. But Instagram Stories provides a much better opportunity to influence the general public. So I highly recommend Instagram Stories over Snapchat. Add hashtags to Instagram posts. So if you're posting to Instagram, uh, post, you can do up to 30 hashtags. So don't do it in the caption itself. Do it in the first comment. This way, your caption can still look nice and clean. And when you're doing these hashtags, uh, do a combination of very broad hashtags, of more niche hashtags, and then very niche hashtags. What I mean by this is I was just in Copenhagen uh, a couple days ago, and I ate at a great vegan restaurant called Green Burger. And a, if I had posted about this on Instagram, one example of a broad hashtag I'd use Hashtag vegan. Hashtag what vegans eat. A more moderate hashtag to use could have been vegan Copenhagen or vegan Denmark or Denmark vegan. And then a very niche one would be hashtag Greenburger or hashtag Greenburger Copenhagen. Uh, so that way you're hitting different um, like segments of uh, the overall audience of people who are looking for this stuff. Um, and you're achieving different things with, with all of this. So don't just use, use the same hashtags over and over. And then also on Instagram, tag location. Tag other accounts. And when you are uploading a video, choose a good cover photo. The determ you know, people are not going to just sit through a whole video. Again, people have very short attention spans on social media. They're not going to sit through a whole video if they don't know what it's going to be. So most of them will just scroll through. So you have the opportunity on Instagram when you upload a video to choose an exact cover photo. So choose the one that you think is going to get the most amount of people to actually watch your video. A little Twitter hack for you. Retweet your own tweets throughout the day. So if you tweet something, an hour or two later, retweet it. Then an hour or two later, undo that retweet and then retweet it. And then keep doing this for a day or two. 
and you are going to get so much more engagement. Every time you do this, it's going to show back up in new, more news feeds, almost like it's a brand new post, and many people are going to engage with this. I did this with a video uh, of a crawfish uh, holding its pinchers under the side of a burning pot, a boiling pot, and it's one of the hardest things I've ever seen. And uh, I felt very compelled to share this. So I, I, I posted it to my Twitter, and uh, I posted it, let's say, about noon on a Tuesday. Uh, I, I retweeted it a few times throughout the day. By the end of the night, it had about 1,000 retweets. I woke up in the morning, maybe had 1,500. Then I retweeted it a few more times for the next few hours. And I was getting ready to stop because I was going to tweet again. I usually tweet about once per day on Twitter. And then it just started spiraling out of control in a good way. And apparently, all my retweets paid off because somebody, some really large account saw it and retweeted it. And it ended up getting 14,000 retweets and has been seen almost 5 million times. And this is, I mean, this is obviously a great thing for, for crawfish and for um, animals in general. Uh, and I think it speaks to this odd strategy uh, and hack that everybody should be taking advantage of. Uh, additionally, with Twitter, uh, use Buffer to schedule tweets. Uh, Buffer or other third-party software uh, this way you can be a little bit more strategic with what you're posting, and you can, uh, yeah, you can be more strategic. It, it, it's nice to be able to plan things out. And then also retweet important tweets from others, but don't feel like you have to overdo it. Uh, retweeting tweets from others is good, but if, you, if your whole news feed or timeline, sorry, timeline is just tweets from others, people are going to be like, does this person post any of their own content? So post a good blend of tweets from others, but also your own tweets. Uh, use a, for, for, the, for the photo that you choose, your profile photo, this is important. I recommend keeping the same pr profile photo for a long time. Find one you really like and keep it for a long time because this is going to um, be how people recognize you more than your name. Really, your profile photo is, is what's key here. Uh, I recommend using a professional photo on Twitter. And if you want to make yourself look a little more attractive, feel free to pucker your lips like, like I did here. <laughs> uh, I would say use something a little bit more casual, even maybe a little artsy, on Instagram. And on Facebook, use something that your friends and family would appreciate. Uh, and no matter what you do, don't click the like button on your own posts. <laughs> we already know you like your posts, otherwise you wouldn't have posted them. So I want to talk a little bit about getting new followers and building community here. So many new connections are going, going to come as a result of shares. So you really, I cannot overestimate the importance of sharing shareable content, pushing out shareable content. Shares are how you're going to get new followers and, new, and, and a lot of engagement um, and, and kind of build a sense of community. Uh, additionally, for building community, Facebook friend people you meet in real life. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great people here this weekend, a lot of networking and connections being made. Friend the people you meet. If you're in a conversation, just be like, hey, you want to connect on Facebook? And uh, it's an amazing opportunity to create some good connections that will be benef mutually beneficial down the line. You know, there are only a handful of people in the world working on animal issues, and a lot of them are in this room tonight uh, or watching this video. So uh, take advantage of this opportunity to Facebook friend people you meet, and these kind of like weaker connections are going to do a lot of good for you in the long haul and a lot of good for animals as a result. And also utilize friend lists. Uh, so you, on Facebook, you can create friend lists, and I choose my friend lists main, based mainly on geography. So for example, I have a New York City friend list. And Whenever I'm visiting New York City, which is usually a few times a year, um, I might consult that list and see the 40 or 50 people I know in New York and maybe reach out to some about setting up a group dinner or hanging out. Um, and it's a very nice way to stay organized. So I highly encourage everybody to uh, use, uh, use friend lists. And I realize that many people here probably already have hundreds or thousands of Facebook friends, and that sounds really daunting, but a nice strategy might be to just implement this for all new Facebook friends that you make. make. Oh, I want to say one more thing about Facebook. Events. So uh, raise your hand if you actually make events here and invite people. Cool. So about half of you. 
So if you are making events on Facebook and you want more people to attend, here's a little w good strategic way to do this. Invite in waves. So first, invite people who are, you are pretty confident will attend, maybe five or 10 people. Even text them, you'd be like, hey, will you, uh, will you RSVP when I invite you? Then after you get a few RSVPs, invite the next wave, uh, the next uh, people who are more uh, also likely to RSVP for your event. And then keep doing this for maybe four to six waves over the course of a day or two. Uh, this way, you are going to uh, get more RSVPs because people are going, who are maybe less likely to attend in the first place are going to see that there's already a lot of people attending and they're also going to have a higher likelihood of seeing somebody that they know is attending. So this is a really good way to, uh, to get more people coming out to your events. And I want to talk about Instagram for a second. Uh, I think that Instagram is the best place for community. As far as changing the world, I think Facebook and Twitter have the, probably the, as, as far as the three big plat social media platforms, I think Facebook and Twitter are probably the best uh, opportunity to, to make a big difference for animals. But as far as building community and um, building engagement, uh, I think that uh, um, using uh, Instagram is a really good way to do that. So using, um, so find people with similar interests. So you can use the hashtags, location tags, tagged photos, that sort of thing. Uh, Instagram is also a really great place for outreach. So commenting uh, so finding people with similar interests of you uh, and engaging with them, so liking and commenting. And this will um, help increase your followers and, and make connections and, uh, and again, help sense and foster this sense of community around veganism, animal rights, etc. And always engage when people comment. So if people are replying to your tweets, posting or commenting on your Instagram, commenting on your Facebook, reply to these comments. This is going to see, make you seem more personable, more relatable, uh, and make more people drawn to you. And then tips for maximizing enjoyment. Unfro unfollow people on Facebook, not unfriend. And then in Instagram sense, uh, uh, mute, instead of ins uh, mute instead of unfollow. And the reason for this is that these people will not show up in your newsfeed if they're posting content that's upsetting you. Uh, but you will still, they can still see your posts. And what's nice about this is, I mean, I have like, I have thousands of Facebook friends who are, who are vegan who post a lot of content that's upsetting. You know, I've been vegan for almost 10 years. I don't need to see more undercover footage. Uh, so if I have Facebook friends who are posting a lot of that on a re very regular basis, I will unfollow them. And I don't feel bad about that because I prioritize my happiness and my long-term ability to work, do this work, and I don't want to get burned out or uh, be, you know, scarred for life uh, any more than I already am, knowing the cruel reality of what's going on behind the closed doors of factory farms and slaughterhouses. So I think that uh, unfollowing people and on Instagram muting people is uh, is really good. This will not be burning bridges. It'll still allow you to influence them. You can still message these individuals and you still have somewhat of a connection, but liberally feel free to unfollow people um, and, and don't feel bad about it because you know, the long-term um, ability to do this work is very important. Don't be afraid to bow out of a conversation if you feel like it's just endlessly going around and around and around. Don't waste your time on conversations that just are never ending and are just turning into a debate. Uh, don't feel free to, or, you know, feel free to, to bow out of the conversation and also, feel free to give them the last word. And by giving them the last word, you are actually kind of taking out their legs. So it's a nice strategic way to kind of just diplomatically end, end this conversation and move on without wasting your time. And don't feed the trolls. Uh, if somebody is posting, you know, if you're posting a photo or a video of a pig suffering on a factory farm, don't say, don't, don't hit the, angry button, or angry emoji on that comment, or replying to that comment, uh, or replying to that comment, calling them a jerk. Uh, what you can do is delete that comment and ban the person. Get them out of here. Uh, there's, there's enough, uh, there's enough, there are enough good people out there that we need to focus on than the one, two, three, four percent of people who want to troll us. So get them out of here, don't engage with them, and don't feed the trolls. Now, in, in conclusion, I want to say that you will reach 
far more people than you will ever know. I want to tell you the story about my friend named Jetmark. So uh, my chosen brother, Victor, and I, uh, Victor spoke yesterday. Uh, we had a funny way of getting over here from Europe, or from the United States. Uh, we went by boat. Uh, I still don't know why we did that, but we did it. Uh, it took seven days. Um, it was not a crickety boat. It was a cruise ship. Uh, it was a cool experience. Um, but we took a boat, and uh, I met this guy named Jetmark. Uh, he's a chef from the Philippines who works on this boat. And he and I became, I guess I'd say, friends. Uh, I was asking about vegan options, because obviously I wanted to eat the, the vegan food that they had to offer. And he was asking me about how do you build muscle on a vegan diet and had some good questions. And maybe the third or fourth day of being on this ship, it was a, a seven-day cruise, the third or fourth day, I went down to the buffet with my Humane League hoodie on. And he points to it, and he's like, Humane League, I know them. And I was like, oh, I, you know, you're probably talking about the Humane Society. Everybody mixes this up with them. Uh, and he's like, no, 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 they post videos on social media about animal cruelty, right? And I was like, I was like yeah. And he's like, they're the reason I'm vegetarian. And then I was like, whoa. And then I was like, dude, I'm the one who runs their social media. And he's like, oh, man, that's crazy. So we had this crazy moment in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So the point of this is that we are only seeing the tip of the iceberg in terms of the impact that we're making on social media and in the world in general. We are having such a massive impact. So it's really important for us to look at everything we do and everything we say on social media as an opportunity to help animals or to hurt animals. Because after all, it's about winning hearts and minds, not arguments and debates. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching the video. We'd love to hear what you think the most effective social media platform is, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Reply below, let us know, also, share the video and subscribe. Thanks.